Welcome to Art Fusion Productions and step-by-step -step abstract art. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your own timber frame and stretch canvas. Some of the tools you can use are a timber miter box, you can use a plastic miter box, you can also have a manual miter saw, or you could use an electric miter saw. All of these will work fine. To start with we have our nice straight timber and get your timber yard or lumber yard to get you the straightest timber you can find. And then we've got to bevel off one edge of that timber frame. And as you can see here, I'm just running the plane along on an angle. Now you can use an electric plane or you can use a hand plane, whatever you have in stock. Or you ask your timber yard to do it for you. And as you'll see, we're going to have your timber with a beveled edge on it like you can see here. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's beveling away from one side to the other. Once you've got your timber bevel, we put it on your miter saw up on its edge with the flat side at the bottom and your bevel at the top. And you cut your first angle using your miter saw. Once we've got our first angle cut, you then measure the length of the piece you're going to create. I've got two pieces 1.7 metres long and I'll have two pieces 1.2 metres long. Once we've measured those we can then go to the other end and cut the second mitre off. Being very careful you've got it in the right position and you're cutting it in the right direction. Always cutting inwards so when you put it together they join at a 45 degree angle. Once you've got that one cut. I'll show you close up. You need the high end to the back of the saw and the low end to the front of the saw. We can then turn it round and cut the other end of a new piece and just keep on going until we have our four pieces all cut and ready to assemble. Always be extremely careful when using your electric miter saw. Once we have our four pieces cut, we can lay them out onto our table. Putting the joints together with the 45 degree angle, the bevel facing upwards on the table, you can then line them up and get ready to start the join. Using your drill, drill through the center of one piece so your screw will go through into the center of the other piece. We then apply some glue. Once we have the glue on, we can then just push them together and that will just spread that glue out evenly. Then getting a screw, I'm using a cordless screwdriver, we then hold them tightly together and screw them in. But don't over tighten the screw once it gets to the end. You just want it so it just closes the gap. I'll show you why later. Once we have all four angles together, we can then get our frame and we flip it over so we have the beveled side facing down onto the table and the flat side facing up. Once we have this in place, we then measure to put a piece so it fits inside the frame one for both ends. Once we have that measured we then get our saw and we cut it exactly to the right length and we cut it off at right angles. Not on an angle of 45 degrees like before. We want it a very straight right angle cut and this will help our frame stay together and come into place. Once we have that cut they're going to fit inside the frame and we put this on the side of the frame where we're going to put our hanging strings. This is the side we need to be the strongest. Once we have them cut and ready to put in position, we've got to measure down on the side to do some more pilot holes. We want these so they finish in the center of the timber that you're going to attach. We also want them to sit down about 
seven millimeters from the top edge so we allow a little bit extra an extra seven millimeters and that'll give us our position for our holes and you'll see that a little bit later in clearer detail I'll do a close-up for you so you can see what we're doing so we put a hole in each end one in the middle and then one in between each of those again so this gives us five holes to do once we have the holes drilled we just take off any burrs that might be sticking out get our timber put it on its edge and we run a bead of glue right along only a thin bead you don't need a lot this is a PVA wood glue that we're using a little bit of glue on the end and a bit just inside where it's going to meet up do the same down the other end as well we then put the timbers in its right position making sure it's in at both ends and as you can see here I've got it dropped down about seven millimeters down from the top edge of the main frame then we put our screw straight through and hold that in position once that's in position we then put another screw in the other end and this is where your right angle is very important because when we screw this one in that pulls the timber together at a right angle and squares the frame for you once you have the one end in you go to the other end and just repeat the same motion making sure you're the seven millimeters down from the top put your first screw in go round to the side and put another screw in just along a bit further and then we go to the other edge like we did on the last one and put the screw in here which pulls the frame in nice and square just tighten those screws up that little bit more once it's together and you're right now we've got to put our center rails in so we've just got to evenly space them I'm putting two center rails in so I need three even space sections all we do is measure out our distances so we put a pencil mark where each center run rail will go and we do this just at both ends measuring them exactly the same to make sure that they're going to run parallel with each other which all helps keep the frame nice and square as accurate as you can be because the accuracy on all of your measurements give you that finished product of a nice square straight canvas then we cut the two rails to fit into that space exactly the same as the rails on the outside edges that way again you have the same length of timbers on all four now we're going to attach the center rails same process as before put our drill pilot straight through allowing for the 7 mil drop down from the top of the rail we'll apply some glue onto both edges so we get a good strong grip and then just with our screws we've been using we're just going to drill that through and screw them in so they're nice and tight and you'll see when they're tight because the glue will squeeze out then that's all we have to do to put our center rails in we'll go around and follow through with the whole four so just repeating the process and once you've repeated that process screwed them all into place this should give you a square canvas ready for the final stages to get this frame nice and solid and ready to be stretched with canvas now we're ready to install our final timbers these are the ones that are going to run through the center so we just measure the center of your canvas and we do that on all four timbers so we've got the exact same center for all so we want this to be again a nice straight finished job and by measuring them properly you'll get that then we measure the distance we need to cut each timber once we've cut those timbers cut them so they're really nice tight fit the tighter the fit the better and then we position them now we're going to have two of these timbers centered on the lines that you just drew 
as you can see here. The centre one will be offset. So we just pull it back to give us room to get our drill and to screw in sideways. Now we have to screw these in position. And as you can see at the end here, we've got a very wide piece of timber because we've got the two together. So we've got to drill right through the two so we can come through in the centre of the piece of timber and that's our pilot hole. Now we're going to have to clear any burrs off there and then we'll glue like we normally do. Make sure we get the glue on both surfaces. Then we fit our timber in position. Once it's in position we're ready to go. Now we've got to use a much longer screw here that's going to reach right through. But again, it's the same procedure, just with our drill. Screw it in and bring it in so it turns nice and tight at the end. And once it's in position, you see the glue come out, you know you've got a nice tight joint. And then we're ready to continue on. So all we've got to do is continue on from the other side, same procedure, put our pilot hole through, and then we can use a slightly shorter screw here because we're only going through one timber, not two. So you don't need this longer screw. I'll give you some measurements for all these screws as we go at the end of the tutorial. And then it's just a matter of tightening this one in exactly the same as what we did on the other side. So we can get a nice, tight, strong, secure timber joint. Once we've put the two end ones in position, we just go and put the centre one in using the same methods again. And once you've done that, on both sides, that's all the timber work is complete. And you have a nice, strong, secure frame ready to put your stretch canvas across. Once we're finished putting the frame together, get some sandpaper, just wrap it round a bit of scrap timber and we want to sand off all the sharp edges right round the frame. So the top and the bottom of the frame, the corners especially, we need to sand those around because those sharp edges can end up tearing your canvas when you're stretching it across it. So you've got to be very careful that all those sharp edges are off. And as you can see, I round off the corners especially. I don't want those sharp where they can dig into the canvas and start a tear when you're stretching it. Now here I've got an example for you as to why we have the beveled edge. It's to make sure that inside edge doesn't touch the canvas. Because if it touches the canvas when you paint it, you can form a ridge which you don't want to have right around your canvas. Now we have your canvas on the table with the good side of the canvas facing down. We sit the frame on top of that with the beveled side facing down as well. We allow about 80 millimeters all around the outside of the whole timber frame so when we fold the canvas over we've got a good bit of canvas which folds over without having too much and you'll see as we go along how much I have folding over each side and that way we get a good cover. As you can see here, once you fold it up you should be able to have about an inch or so. We start in the centre, just fold one side up and then we put some staples in to get us going. Once we've got that side ready, we go across to the opposite side using our canvas stretcher pliers. We then put some tension on our canvas. Now we don't put large amounts of tension. It's quite gentle but just enough to stretch that canvas. Put too much tension on you'll start tearing your canvas. Once you've got the tension on hold it with your hands, fold it over with your fingers and put some staples in. That gets our first stage done. Then we go to the other corners and do exactly the same thing in the middle. Just put a fold over, put some staples in, go to the other end, then we put some stretching tension on, hold it with our thumb and then put some more staples in just to get us started. Now we want to start to try and even the tension out, especially on a large canvas you need to do this. We're going to go to each corner 
and we're going to put a bit of tension on each end. Now not too much tension, just enough to make sure the canvas is straight. We go on each corner and do the same thing. Just put one staple in and one staple only because you're going to remove these staples later. It's just to get some tension across the whole canvas so as you're doing your stapling along the edges it's going to be evenly tensioned. So we do that to the whole four corners and once you've got those ready you'll be right to then continue on and start stretching. Now by starting from those center points we just start working along putting some tension on the canvas and just adding staples as we go. I usually do about three staples at a time. Now when we're doing this tension I don't want you to put massive force on it and try and tighten it as tight as you can. All you do is destroy your canvas. The canvas just needs to be stretched out so it ends up just a nice solid surface and all you do is just fold it over like I'm doing and just add staples. We just keep working our way down and go one way then stop and then go back the other way until we eventually make it to the ends of each run. And once we've got to those ends well then you'll start to see how your canvas is really starting to stretch together. Once we get to the end this is where we remove that one staple you put in. That was just holding a bit of tension for you. So we remove that away once it's out of the way we then just get our pliers and we continue just lightly tensioning here. I only want light tension on the corners because this is where you will split your canvas. You don't need much tension because you're only doing a very small little area. So you put your last staple about 20 millimeters from the end and you just go to all four corners and do the same and finish them all off the same on all four and then I'll show you how we fold and finish our edges for you. Now we're ready for your corner. Work out what side you want to fold it on. I always keep it to the bottom of the canvas so it's not seen. Then you just fold it across like as if you were wrapping a present. But what we want to do is take a little bit off the inside here so it doesn't end up as thick. So we just cut down to the corner then turn our scissors upwards and go up so we don't take too much of the other side away. Then we just fold it back around just like we were doing that present and hold it in position. Now I'll show you again we just fold it in keep it tucked in nice and tight and with your fingers run it along and pull it up over the top and get a good bit of tension on there. Once you have it in position put a couple of staples in and then that holds that so it won't fall away. Now when we do this next fold, fold it nice and tightly. Don't fold it so the canvas is overhanging on the edge. That'll look ugly. Tuck your finger in, get it folded right in and so it comes back on an angle. Once it's back on the angle you will not see that once the canvas is finished. Put a couple of staples in, a few more down lower just to hold it all together and that's a really neat corner that you have on your canvas. What I like to do is run a few staples just along this edge here and that holds it even tighter up against the side and then when you paint over the top of that that tends to disappear. So that's how you do an angle. Well I hope you've enjoyed watching this stretch canvas come together. If you'd like to learn how to create abstract artworks of your own, go to the website and check it out. We have all sorts of information on everything to do with abstract art. I also have 13 art lessons, all different techniques, all in step-by-step -step and fine detail for anyone to be able to follow, especially if you're a beginner artist. So go to the website, check it out, and until then, happy painting.